Well, hello and welcome Integrated Math 1 crew. Mr. Robinson here with a solution guide video for your Unit 5B group exam. I'm going to jump right into it. Um, no bells and whistles here. Check the description section down below for timestamps of specific problems that you are trying to look for so you can help ready yourself for this test. And it's, of course, because if I don't have your group exam yet graded because you might have finished it late or what have you, I've, these ones kind of take longer than I expected. Uh, and I don't know how to really give you the right feedback because there are like so many of you kind of students in a group. Um, we can, uh, I don't know, you'll probably... You'll probably be hearing about something before you hear in this video here, but basically I might be talking to you about going over it with you guys as a group if you want to come visit in office hours or something because it's hard. But check out the answers that I provide for you here to help you and give you feedback on what you might have done at the time. Okay, so uh, I'm skipping the group related questions like favorite color and stuff like that clearly, so I'll go straight into the math stuff and uh, I'll try to make this as fast as possible. Uh, we all have things to do. So here we go. Let's get started here and I'm going to start with this number three. Number three says on Super Bowl Sunday, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Kansas City Chiefs combined for a total of 40 points. True story. Though the Bucks scored 22 more points than the Chiefs. Also a true story. Uh, let B represent the total number of points the Buccaneers scored. It should say scored, I think. And let C represent the total number of points the Chiefs scored. Uh, write a system of equations that would model the situation but do not solve. All right. Like, listen, the, the Bucks won 31 to 9. All right, so they, they score 22 more points, 31 plus 9 is 40. But that's part of the point. If you can use real numbers, whether they're true or not, if you can use real numbers to help you for the equations, go ahead. I have two bits of information here. One for the total co uh, combined number of points from how much the Bucks scored with how much the Chiefs scored. A combined total is a sum. It's an addition. However many points the Bucks scored, which was really 31, and however many points the Chiefs scored, which was really a pitiful 9, uh, adds up to 40. Whether or not you know it, with the variables that we're going to go ahead and choose to use, you add those, you get 40. I think most people understood that answer. Now, the uh, second part here, or the uh, equation, the, the second part here, Bucks scored 22 more points than the Chiefs. You are comparing how much the Bucks scored compared to the Chiefs. Are they equal? No, they're not equal. But writing B plus or B equals C might be a start. They are not equal, but I can do something to make them equal. The Bucks have 22 more points than them. So how do I make something equal if this is 22 more? No, you do not add 22 to Bucks. They already have 22 more. You add another 20. If the Bucks score 22 more points, they're not going to be tied. They're going to have 44 more points. You need to get the Chiefs to score 22 more points to tie them. If they score 22 more points, they will be tied with the Bucks. There's no chance in heck they're going to be doing that. They're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, fool. Um, so anyway... B equals C plus 22 is probably the best way to go about that next scenario. That's the way we've set these up before. You, If you want to go back to other worksheets and stuff that we've done, uh, go to the one about the basketball teams and the number of roses and such. And we've done some stuff on Agilastic with this and on the practice exam. But that's called a comparative equation. These ones people have trouble with, but, you know, 31 is 9 plus 22. I think that seems to make sense for the real world scenario. So there's a system. You could solve it. You'll get 31 and 9. Um, but uh, go Bucks. All right. Number four. Fitness Center A has a $60 enrollment fee and costs $35 per month. So just to enroll and sign up, $60. And you only pay that $60 once up front, no matter how many months you stay there. Fitness Center B has no enrollment fee, just sign up, but more expensive monthly fee at $45 per month. Let Y represent the total cost in dollars of being a member for each fitness center. And let X represent the number of months that you are a member. So which two equations would properly model the system? Whether or not they're here, I show hope you guys are pretty good at these ones here when they have kind of a startup amount and then a growth rate with it. This is that whole Y equals MX plus B form here. Y equals MX plus B. B is the constant not affected by X when X is number of months. The enrollment fee doesn't change or doesn't help dictate how this number you know, is altered or grow or whatever based on number of months. That 60 is up front as far as Fitness Center A goes. Fitness Center A is going to involve that 60 somehow. It's either this answer or this answer. Now, for this to work here, that 60, that 60 enrollment fee should not be affected by the number of months. It's not going to be D because that 60 would increase with it. It's just going to be B. It's going to be B. That's Fitness Center A. Ignore when I said A right there. Uh, now, the other part hopefully started to make sense of because 60 was a constant, 35 was the one that was affected by number of months. 45 is also affected by number of months. So if there's a 35x, then surely there should be a 45x right there. There would be a plus zero if that was considered the enrollment fee, but I think we can ignore that uh, happily. That is fitness center B there. So the two answers for A and B are B and C. <laughs> All right. uh, now we're going to use these two equations for the next problem. If you use different equations for the next problem, you might have gotten fraction or negative or something weird answers, and maybe you corrected yourself with your group thereafter. So number five, Y equals 35X plus 60. 
and y equals 45x, we are now going to solve for x and y essentially. This one solving for x, this is solving for y. After how many months x would you spend the same amount at each fitness center? There's only one month in the, just, just one of the same month for both fitness centers that you would spend the same amount. Not like, oh, if I was one month here and seven months there, I'd spend the same amount. No, I want the same number of months for both, clearly. this That's how systems are going to work. So in order to do this, guys, I would highly recommend substitution method. I do know one group that used elimination. They're, I guess they were fine. But as long as y is isolated here, just go ahead and set these equal. 35x plus 60 equals 45x. Saving time on the algebra here, guys. Subtract 35x from both sides. Subtract it from both sides. We get 60 equals 10x. Divide both sides by 10. 60 over 10 is 6. You get x equals 6. That is the number of months that you are going to need to spend at either fitness center to have spent the same amount. How much would have you spent to make this happen? You can substitute 6 into either equation for x because the point is you'll get the same y. 6 months makes gives you the same cost. I'm going to choose the bottom equation here because it's probably one less step to do. And I can multiply 45s better than I can do 35s because 45s half of 90. And I use 90s all the time when it comes to, uh, I don't know, rotations for things, excuse me, for things like 90 degrees, all that stuff. 45 times 6, this is me without a calculator, that's 45 times 2 times 3. The reason I said 45 times 2 is because that's 90, and 90 times 3, guys, is 270. Uh, so 270, the dollar sign's already there, $270. You could use a calculator, Clary. That's That was me doing mental math on paper <laughs> for you. Uh, $270 is how much you'd spend at either fitness center. Guys, I'd say what, get a get a pentathlon. What's it called? My sister, my both my sisters have this thing, a Peloton. Peloton, get a Peloton. Oh, that costs money too. Just do some push-ups in your living room and go run out and get some get some fresh air. Go get a run in. All right, there's your fine. Cause that's that's a lot of money for six months, man. No matter which thing you spend. Now, if you kept going, Fitness A would be a better deal because it's only thirty-five dollars per month afterward. It always has been, but that sixty-dollar enrollment fee is now caught up after six months. You're good. After this, Fitness Center B gets more expensive. So if you're Less than six months, Fitness Center B is the better option. If you're more than six months, Fitness Center A is the better option. All right, let's go to number seven. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on this farm he had chickens and pigs, E-I-E-I-O, with a head, head here, it's leg, legs there, here are heads, there are legs, everywhere heads, legs. The farmer also got extra mathy on that day, and he counted 26 total heads and 80 total legs among all chickens and pigs. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so... If C represents total number of chickens on his farm, P represents total number of pigs on his farm, the blow system of equations can model the situation. So again, I gave you the system of equations here. I'm going to rewrite it a little bit larger in case it's kind of small for you guys. C plus P equals 26 and 2C plus 4P equals 80. One general assumption we can have is each chicken, each chicken and each pig have one head. So the number of heads that you count are also the number of bodies, the number of animals that are there. So... If C is number of chickens, it's also the number of chicken heads. And if P is the number of pigs, it's also the number of pig heads. And I, I hope you were understanding of that when we do this. Uh, 26 total farm animals of chickens and pigs. And we can do that one. The bottom equation, you know, I put in this number two and this number four. And I think most people kind of took on what this had to do with. But, you know, I if, if you understand, if this is not just number of heads, but also number of animals, you also saw that there were 20, uh, excuse me, 80 total legs. This is a legs equation right here, guys. And in a legs equation, you have to have legs plus legs equals legs. So clearly, this has something to do with legs. And, you know, one of the other assumptions we're going to have to make here is that bark, 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 each chicken, <laughs> I was just, I was going to say, imagine you're a chicken. Each chicken has two legs, and each pig has four legs, okay? And that's what we're doing here. If each chicken times two equals the number of legs you have for all, the, if, if I have 10 chickens, I'm looking at 20 legs for those 10 chickens. That's why we do, you know, 2 times 10. So, you know, that's what 2C would be. It's the total number of legs of all the chickens, and 4P is the total number of legs of all the pigs. I just asked about 2 and 4. It got a little tricky this time. What do 2 and 4 represent? 2 is just the number of legs per chicken. Number of legs per chicken. 2C is the number of legs of all the chickens. But this is a per chicken. Haha. -ha. And 4, just the 4, is the number of legs per pig. So that's interpreting that there. And I hope that you'd be pretty good at coming up with those equations and that understanding. Just like if we have those dollars and dimes, kind, or excuse me, quarters and dimes kinds of equations. 25 cents for a quarter, that's what the 25 is for, you know, things like that. All right, now we continue on this problem here. Now we just have to solve this system of equations. Uh, as I used substitution last time, I'm going to use elimination 
this time here. C plus P equals 26 and 2C plus 4P equals 80. I'm going to, uh, most people probably took the top equation multiplied by negative 2. You know me, guys. I'm a divider. I'm going to divide the bottom here by negative 2. Negative 2 here. And that will now get me a negative C, negative 1C minus 2P equals negative 40. You didn't have to do it this way. That's just me saying it. Um, can't just move the C plus P on its own. So rewrite it next to the C plus P equals 26. Uh, leaves me with some negatives. Boo hiss. That's all right. C minus C is zero. Well, it's gone. P minus 2P is negative 1P and 26 minus 40 is negative 14. Negative P is negative 14, so positive P is positive 14. Divide both sides by negative 1, multiply both sides by negative 1, change the signs, whatever you put. There are 14 pigs on old McDonald's farm. These are things you can double check with your system stuff, by the way. In one group, I overheard doing it. Uh, C plus P is 26. If there are 14 pigs, then there are 12 chickens. Subtract 14, C equals 12. 12 chickens, 14 pigs. And, you know, like I said, I heard in a group someone say, yeah, that makes sense because now there are 26 animals, like the heads, and 12 chickens means 24 legs. That's perfect. You're working this out the way that, you know, we're supposed to interpret that. It's 24 legs here. 14 times 4 is 56 legs there. 24 plus 56 is 80. 80 legs. All right, so that works out. All right, now we're going to start looking at the inequality stuff, and I promise to be pretty fast with this. Which of the following graphs would correspond to the inequality 7x plus 4y is less than 8? Uh, I sure hope that you took some care in this and attempted to get this in slope-intercept form because it's one of the practices you'll have to generally do on these things anyway. If I subtract 7x from both sides, I get 4y is less than negative 7x plus 8. And then if I divide everything by 4, I'll go and write it out. Here you get uh, y is less than negative 7 fourths x plus 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now, a couple things. Number one, I did not flip this inequality because I never divided by a negative. I divided by a positive. Uh, number two here, you know, these graphs go by twos. We've practiced a lot with the scaling there. I hope it didn't bother you too much since you saw the numbers. I have a plus two here. That means we're looking at something with a y-intercept of two. That means we rule out option C and option B. A and D are still on the table here. And this negative seven fourths, are you really going to be going down seven over four? You could, um, but it's it's a negative slope. And if you can tell here, I have a negative slope here and a positive slope here. It's going to be option A. You rule out D. Option A is going to be it. If I did go down 7, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. That ends up being another point. All these were dotted lines. There were other things we could have referred to as well. I haven't even looked at the shading, have I? Uh, if this were a greater than, I probably would have still marked this answer, even though that would have been wrong. I guess there wouldn't have been a correct answer. But the less than, the less than indicates shading underneath the boundary line. If y is less than in slope-intercept form, this is an underneath shading here. And that's what we get as well that also kind of rules that out as an option. There are a lot of ways you could have determined your options there. The negative slope and the y-intercept clearly were also at the dotted line. Well, these were all dotted lines, but shading underneath was the last, uh, the, the last bit. All right, uh, number 11, which system of inequalities corresponds to the graph? So all of these have the same boundary lines, 4x plus 3, negative x minus 2, 4x plus 3, negative x minus 2. Those are all the same. The only difference is the greater than, the greater thans versus less thans and the equals versus non-equals. So uh, in also equal to means we'll have a solid boundary line. So we do have to figure out which one, negative x minus 2, is it that line or is it that line? And then it's 4x plus 3 as well. I'd argue 4x plus 3 is the easier one to figure out. It's y-intercept of 3 there and going up 4 over 1. It doesn't matter. They're both the same. So, um, okay. This has a dotted line on it on the 4x plus 3. That means it's going to have to not also be equal to while the other one is. So A qualifies. B does not. C does not. And D qualifies here. Just like last time. Rule out B and C. Those are already gone because those don't work as far as the dotted versus solid. Now we got to talk about shading above versus below. On the dotted line here, the 4x plus 3, it looks like an above shading. That looks like an above shading. And the solid line here looks like a below shading right there. So we got to be, in, we're in slope-intercept form. We got to be above 4x plus 3. This doesn't indicate above. That indicates below. Looks like that's backwards. That looks like above here. And then this one here looks like below. Y is less than or equal to. I think the answer is going to be D. We got to rule out that A option. And we're left with D. D ends up being the final answer there. Now, you could also test points and see if things work. Try negative 3, negative 2, plug it into those and see if you get a true statement out. You will. You will. Actually, I think the next question has to do with those exact things. So let's check that out. Yep. 
the negative three negatives is one of the options. All right. Use the same graph from the previous problem to determine whether they're solutions. So you could have used the graph to help you, or you could have used the inequalities in your system by plugging in numbers. I'm going to use the graph the whole way. Uh, actually, I'm going to use the numbers for one of them. And I'll talk about kind of why it works, whether or not you use the numbers. All right, 0, 0, is this a solution to the uh, system there? Uh, no, it's in neither bounded or shaded region there. It needs to be in the overlapping shaded region. That is going to be a false. Uh, negative 3 comma negative 2 fits right in here. It is in the overlapping shaded region. That is very true. That is a solution to your system there. 1 negative 4. It is in a shaded region, but it's not in an overlapping shaded region. It's, it only satisfies the bottom inequality, the less than or equal to negative x minus 2, but it's not greater than 4x plus 3. So as long as it's false for 1, it's false for the whole thing. It needs to be true for both. Negative 2 comma 0. So this is on the solid line that bounds the shaded region. A solid line counts as long as it's on the bounded part. This, like this wouldn't count over here, but uh, this on the solid line, as long as it bounds the shaded region is all good, that's true. Negative one, negative one is also on the solid line, but be careful because it also hits dotted line as well. And as you know, dotted line, I might wanna plug this one to show you. Uh, this was for the y is, what is that, great, uh, less than, y is less than, or no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the greater than y is greater than 4x plus 3. If I substitute negative 1 for y and negative 1 for x, I'm going to get a statement that says negative 1 is greater than negative 1. You can see why things on things on a dotted line don't count because you'll get a number that says it's greater than itself and that's not true. That can't be true. If it was also equal to, now it makes sense because it can be on that. So it fails the bottom inequality, excuse me, the top inequality there for the dotted line portion. It fails that. That would be a false statement. Uh, despite the fact it's on the solid, it's also on the dotted. No good. Same reason why over here it's no good because it's just, it's not a part of the greater than the dotted one. And negative 100 comma 2. Now that's not a typo. I typed a negative 100 in that go forever left just a little bit up. Would you believe that this would still fall in the shaded region? Understanding that these lines, guys, listen, just because we stopped shading there doesn't mean these lines don't go forever. This keeps going, guys. This keeps going. The overlapping shaded region over here keeps going. Do you think negative 100 comma 2 will be in there? Yeah, un, oh gosh, what's the word? Unequivocally so. It's just whatever it's, yes. I, I think that can't be mistaken. If you're not sure if it's negative 100 comma 100, I'd understand where you're not sure. Um, if you want to double check this though, once again, substitute these into both of your inequalities if you'd like to. 2 for y, 4 times negative 100 plus 3 is 2 greater than negative 397, you betcha. Uh, what's the other one? x, uh, y is less than or equal to, so let's see, 2 is less than or equal to negative x minus 2. 2 is less than or equal to 100 minus 2. 2 is less than or equal to 98. Also true. So it satisfies both inequalities there. You could try it that way. But yes, you just go kind of forever left and a little bit up. You're in the overlapping shaded region. That one is indeed true. A little bit of extrapolation. A little, a little tougher there, but there it is. All right, and um, the last two problems here, they're part of the same bit. Graph this system of inequalities on your own. Because you're on edge elastic, you can get to do dotted lines or shaded regions. I'll do the dotted lines and shaded regions with you here uh, if you'd like to, but I'll first draw what you would have done. So I'll do this first one green and this next one. Um, now let's do blue and red to get that purple overlapping shaded, overlapping shaded region. So in blue, y is less than 3x minus 3. I start at negative 3 as a y-intercept. Doesn't it feel relieving to be able to go by 1s on your scale? I think it does. And we rise 3 and run 1, rise 3, run 1, plot a point, rise 3, run 1, plot a point, etc. And we can also go down 1, 3, down 3, and left 1, like that. And all you got to do was draw a solid line. Now, eventually, this should end up being a dashed line because it's strictly less than and not less than or equal to. So although you drew this, although you drew this, I will do a dotted line in a moment after I draw this one. All right, x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 8. You know, it might make sense to get this thing in slope-intercept form first by subtracting x from both sides here and then dividing everything by 2. And negative x divided by 2 there gives you negative 1 half x. And 8 over 2 is 4. So negative 1 half x plus 4 is my boundary line. I will start at 4, and I will fall 1 and run 2. And plot is at points here, and then rise one and run two to the left here, 
here, here. And I will draw the red line. Get some arrows. Sorry, I'm getting my tools ready here. Uh, draw the red line right there. So this is what you got to do. Yours were black and white, whatever, but this is what you got to do. Now, if you could continue, because you're going to answer some questions over here about dotted line shade above or below, let me draw them and then plot them in. So with this blue one, because it's strictly less than and not less than or equal to, we would eventually have a dotted line if you could do that. And then we would be shading below because of the less than. When in slope intercept form, you can properly determine whether you do the shading above or below. We'll be shading below this thing right here and below would look as such that's underneath underneath all right there all right now the other one stays as a solid line as I fill this in whoopsie the other one stays as a solid line because it is greater than or equal to the or equal to means solid line and then the greater than means we'll be shading above it so there's that one the other one we will now be shading above, and in shading above, you are going to be getting this overlapping shaded region right here. I didn't ask you anything about the overlapping shaded region, but I'm just pointing out that the solution to the system is anything that's kind of in that purple there. I like to make these black and white after because it kind of does give that darker thing that you tend to see like in your book. The overlapping shaded region is the solution to that system there, not that they asked. But uh, okay, in this top inequality here, it's a dotted line shaded below. So here, y is less than 3x minus 3 would feature dotted, I think they had said dashed here, a dashed line, and we would shade below that line, if you could. And then this one, uh, not because it's greater than or equal to here, but when you got y by itself, it still said greater than or equal to, but because it's the or equal to, it's solid, and because it's greater than, in the end, we would be shading above. All right, I think that was it there. It was, okay, that ought to do it for me here. I hope that this 20-ish uh, minutes was very helpful for you to study and remember how some of these things work. And uh, if you need any more questions, once again, just go back to any of uh, the timestamps in the description section. Description, I can't, can't say that well. Description section down below when it comes to uh, finding specific problems, or you can ask me a question in the comments section or anything like that. All right, thank you. Take care. Bye.